Hey guys, welcome to another automation series video today. In today's video, we'll be playing with NFC cards and what we can do with these. Um, I bought a pack, I don't know, like last year and I got like 50 of them and I'm like, what do I do with them? Um, so I decided this weekend, um, Thanksgiving weekend, uh, we'll do a little fun project where we will make an NFC card um, and essentially kind of program it to essentially be able to tap and patch a server. Um, so essentially that's what we're gonna try to do and accomplish. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun and essentially now I can tell my friends, hey, if I wanna patch a server, I got a, I got a card that can do it. <laughs> um, so we're gonna try to do that here um, and get it all working. So um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so um, NFC cards obviously have very limited functionality, obviously. So what we're gonna do is integrate this with our AWX server. Um, we'll kind of create, use, use this API. Um, we will create another server that we'll just probably call API. Um, that will essentially be a bash script that will use the API to essentially kick off the patching. Um, and then we'll create the URL that we can use um, so that essentially the URL will be programmed on this card. So when I tap it, my phone will go to that URL and then it will essentially kick off the patching in AWX. Simple, right? <clears throat> so let's get started with that. So what we'll do here, um, so we'll, we'll need to create another server. So let's, let's start with that. Um, so we'll go to our DNS uh, project here. We'll create a server. Um, all right, we'll add the DNS entry for this server here. Um, we'll call it uh, API in A and 85. 85 is gonna be very important here. So we will commit this. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so the, now that that's committed, we're gonna need to also add this to our Ansible Playbooks inventory file so that we can actually provision this server. Uh, we'll go to inventory, edit, and we'll add API, add API, commit that. All right, so, we should be mostly set for all the things that we need to do in our GitLab um, in this case. So next, we will go to our AWX dashboard um, and log in. We will then provision the server. So we will use our Ansible workflow for creating a new VM, patching it, installing Docker, certs, and Nginx. In this case, we won't need Docker installed, but since it's part of it, no harm um, by my creative playbook that can would say like true or false if I want Docker um, in the future. So, but in this case, we'll just get the easy stuff out. So the host name, we'll call it API. The address would be the 185. The name, we'll call it Dragon API here. And we will set the proxy to be localhost 8080. Um, and we can leave the headers as true. So we will let this provision. So this will take a few minutes, you know, it'll go through all the steps, create all the things, we'll get a VM set up. But what we'll do here is, well, that's well, that's happening. We'll actually, we can open this in a new tab so we can uh, get back to it later. Um, we're going to be using this patching playbook. So essentially this playbook will, if you launch it, you select the host name, it'll patch that host. So we'll be utilizing this to do the actual patching. Um, so what we want to do is create another user. Um, so we'll call it like SVC API patch. Um, you can obviously name it anything you want. Um, in this case, that's what we're going to name it. Um, and then we'll just do like API password. This should really be a randomly generated password, but in this case for demo sync's sake, we're just gonna do like API password. Um, so we're gonna just leave it API password, right? So we will save that. So we create a new user. Um, so we want to actually go back to templates. We'll go to patching and we'll edit the access for this user um, and add it in so that it can run this patching template, but like nothing else, because we don't want to give it access to everything, uh, mainly, especially with like APIs, you don't want it to be like, hey, you can just run any of my playbooks. Um, that is very dangerous. So we'll just leave it so that it can execute, right? So we'll save that. Um, okay, so now we got the API user created. It has access to this template. 
Um, so I think everything now should be all set in regards to what it needs. Um, what we'll do though is we're gonna create a bash script. So we'll open this up um, and, I, and I already started it obviously, hashtag Bing bash. Um, but we will actually need to utilize this API v2 here <coughs> to actually launch the template. So um, there's a few ways to do this. So I think it's projects. Oh, no, no. Um, it's templates. So we need to go to job templates. Um, we need to look for our patching template. Okay, so last job patching here. Um, it looks like it's our 10th template. So we got job templates number 10 for patching. And then there should be a launch. Yep, a launch. So you can actually use AWX's um, API and actually kick it off from here, but we'll use curl commands on the back end to essentially do this. So we can make a uh, application JSON request with contents, which we will need to do. Um, but what we can do here, so essentially what will happen is we'll grab this and we'll make a post request. So what we'll do is use curl. Um, we'll set it as silent and the output to dev null because we don't want this to really output anything. Um, and then we'll create a post request, right? And then we will have the user um, to be able to log in. So this is the SVC API patching. Oh, did I do patch or patching? See, I don't even remember this already. Um, there we go, let's open this here real quick. Uh, users, patch, just patch. Um, API patch, and then the password is API password. So that's how it'll authenticate. Um, also plain text passwords in, in, a, in a actual file is really bad practice, but we're, we're automating for the fun of it. Um, Obviously you should not be doing this on like a public facing server, but in your own like home network, I'm weighing my risk, pros, pros and cons, risk and reward versus situation. So um, this is for demoing purposes only. If you decide you want to actually implement something like this, you probably should encrypt some of your stuff and make it work a little bit better. Um, but now we can set it so that we will grab this. So URL, so it will make a request here and actually I'll word wrap this here real quick. So it'll do a curl. Um, it won't output anything. It will do a post request using the API credentials to this URL. Um, and then what we need to do here, um, which can, I'm just gonna make a new line. Um, we'll set some headers. Um, so content type application JSON, right? Because what we need to do is essentially do this, the media type application JSON. And then um, we'll have to accept application JSON here. And then we will set up the data. So what we need to do here is set up the extra parameter variables. Um, this is to define the host names that we'll be using for which host that we will actually patch um, using the script. So we'll set up extra vars and then we will set it so that um, the host name variable is defined here. Um, and we're gonna just define it for this purpose to be demo three. Um, but we can obviously define any host that we want um, in the data section. So that should essentially be the curl command that's needed to essentially hit the API and run it. <clears throat> what we'll do next here though, is we need to uh, cat an echo file, um, essentially uh, end of file, um, set it so that we can set the status to be 200 okay so that it will respond back with that status. Um, and then we'll just set the content type um, to be text HTML. And then we'll just have it um, print out the paragraph um, that just request completed so that we have something that we can see when we run um, this on the web page. Um, so that it will essentially output this and we'll actually get a status <clears throat> in here. Um, so, with that, we can go take a look back at our pipeline and we should see that it has finished installing and setting everything up. We should actually be able to go to our 
API. And then we'll have to install um, HTTPD, um, which is in Apache essentially. And we'll have to do a few configurations here before we um, get set up. So let's install HTTPD. Um, and then we'll edit the configuration for it so that it listens on 8080 instead of 80 because um, our uh, engine X proxy, yes, I said it right finally, <laughs> um, and uh, will uh, won't interfere with the port already being open. So we set that up. <clears throat> then we'll go to var www CGI bin, and here we'll create the patch.sh script, which will be what we generated here. Um, so we'll copy and paste that. Um, so essentially we got we got all the things that we need here. Uh, we'll save that. And then what we'll do is make sure that it is executable, patch.sh. Um, so what we can do to make sure that it works before we get the API stuff working is we can actually manually run it. So it should return something like this on here, but in AWX, we should be able to see jobs. And now we can see that it kicked off a patching job, um, which is what we want. And we can see the details is it will patch demo three. So we know the script works, which is great. Um, so what we'll do is system CTL uh, start HTTPD. And then what we can do here is so now we should be able to open up a browser and go HTTPS api.dragon.local slash CGI bin because that's where the directory will be and then patch.sh. So we can see it will say request completed and it should kick off the next patching job. So we can see it's running now and patching. So essentially now, once we hit this API, we essentially can patch. So what we'll do is, we got our NFC card, um, we got a phone. Um, and so what I'll do, because I can't hook up my phone to my stream, I, I, I don't really do video recordings with my phone. I'll just put up screenshots, you know, like here, maybe there, somewhere else, magical. Um, but if you're running an Android, you can download NFC tools in the Play Store. NFC tools pop up somewhere here. Um, and then we can configure it by hitting the right tab, add a record, URL record, and then typing in this URL that we have, so HTTPS API dragon.local CDI bin, and then hit write, scan it in, and then it should be good. So now, if I were to go to, you know, the JAWS page, so when I tap my phone now, I will be able to open up Google and proceed to the thing because I don't have HTTPS set up correctly. And you can see it actually kicked off the job. So essentially whenever I tap my phone and go to the web page, it will kick off another job. So essentially now I can patch my server every single time my phone taps my card. Um, it is very addicting. <clears throat> Um, but obviously there's a lot of opportunities for DDoSing by tapping it way too many times and, and other things. But for the most part, you can now say, I have a card that can patch my server. Um, so that's how you can do it, guys. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.